Changing shorelines, we look at how the Great Lakes are bouncing back from record low water levels and why experts aren't celebrating just yet. Also, the annual weather event known as Monsoon and why India is struggling to predict them. I'm Afan Jodhri. Welcome to Globe Now. Just a year ago, there was a lot of concern about the Great Lakes. Water levels were at record lows. This is how people remember water levels from decades ago. And this is what things looked like just last year. Well, a different story is unfolding. Water levels this year have been closer to the historic average. This is good news because the Great Lakes represent 20% of the world's fresh surface water. So, a sigh of relief for cottage owners, boaters, and the shipping industry. Except not everyone is resting easy. David Sweetnam is the executive director of Georgian Bay Forever, a Canadian charity that studies water quality, water levels, and biodiversity. Welcome, David. Morning. Why are you not convinced that the Great Lakes ecosystem and record low levels are a thing of the past? I think when you look at the best available scientific uh, data, um, the records that have existed, the modeling going forward, the institutions that have done a lot of work on this over the last couple of years have um, basically recommended caution on any sense of returning to normal right now. This seems to have been an anomalous winter. And going forward, the models are actually predicting an ongoing declining trend in the net basin supplies in especially the upper Great Lakes. Lakes Michigan and Huron is one great big huge lake. Give me a picture of what the Great Lakes system will look like in 30 years if water levels do begin to go down, as you're suggesting. Well, the uh, results of the economic impact study that just came out showed that over the next 35 years, there could be about an $18.82 billion cost to the economy. Mm -hmm. It's a $5.1 trillion economy. So it's actually the fourth largest economy in the world, right between Japan and Germany. This is specifically in areas looking at like uh, shoreline property values. So we only had data for Ontario, but there's almost a $1 billion hit on coastal property owners. We've got costs to recreational boaters and tourism. When we had this potential risk of low, low, low water levels a couple of years ago, even in anticipation of those water levels being low, you had marina operators that were either about to go out of business or had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars collectively, to dredge uh, their boat slips. David, give me one idea that would mitigate this downward trend. It is possible to put some structures in place to mitigate against this uh, water level decline. And if you think of being able to modulate the outflow from the St. Clair River, the Niagara River, that would protect Lake Erie and Lake Michigan and Huron, uh, we could bank water in times of surplus. And then during periods of drought-like conditions, we could actually use those structures to retain a bit of the extra water up in those lakes while maintaining a, uh, you know, a healthy flow for both shipping and for power generation. Interesting. Okay. Thank you so much, David. My pleasure. Well, we want to hear from you. If you live in the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence areas, what have you noticed when it comes to water levels? Are you concerned? Tweet us at Globe Now. Now, staying on the theme of water and climate change, India is in the middle of its monsoon season, that time of year which can mean buckets of rain for months, which is why it represents hope to struggling farmers and fear for the many who live near shorelines and may have to flee due to sudden rising waters. Well, a new film premiering in a few weeks at the Toronto International Film Festival looks at why it's getting harder to predict monsoons and how climate change could be a factor. Take a look. Monsoon is all of their water for the year. Without monsoon, there isn't water. Without water, there isn't life. Uh, they celebrate its arrival. They um, curse it and wait, can't wait for it to end. Uh, it affects every aspect of, of life in India. The immediate impact of climate change on monsoon is unpredicting. It's taking, it's making a chaotic system more chaotic. If the rain doesn't come, your crops don't grow, and if your crops don't grow, you can't live there. Well, one of the regions we were in is in the um, eastern part of Maharashtra. It hadn't received rain for three years when we, when we arrived and all of the villages in that area are ghost towns. The early indications are that what it will lead to the, is, is the likelihood of more rain falling at sea, uh, less rain falling on the subcontinent, so uh, hotter, 
drier monsoon seasons is, is what we're likely looking at. Well, that's all for today's show. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter. We've heard climate change stories from Canada and India. How convinced are you by these links between weather events, water levels, and climate change? Tweet us at GlobeNow. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Thanks for watching.